Hi, welcome back to SoFlow TV again, everybody. It is your host with the most. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, please, and click the bell next to the subscribe button so you're notified every time a new video goes up on SoFlow TV. Welcome to SoFlow TV podcast listening style. So pull up a chair, fix our drinks, roll up something, get ready, and let's go in. This story right here, <laughs> I made a comment not too long ago where I said, I think I'm going to quit everything in America, move back to Jamaica and start getting involved in the cocaine trade. I said it as a joke, of course, but it seems that it would actually be a lucrative thing to do, given the fact that being caught with a large amount of cocaine in Jamaica doesn't give you a lot of time in prison. Matter of fact, I've proven now that you don't even get prison time, you get released. Let me remind you before we get into this story about this high-ranking politician's brother who was caught with a huge amount of cocaine and how they are now handling this case like it is so precious. Just before this, we're talking about November of 2022 coming down into December, eight American passengers on a cruise ship in Jamaica stopped off in Jamaica, took an excursion, and when they got ready to board that ship again, somehow they got a hold of 850,000 US dollars worth of cocaine and they were caught. You didn't hear anything about them doing prison time. They went to court, they were found guilty, they were convicted, and they were hit with a fine and allowed to fly back out of Jamaica just to give you a heads up so you understand where we're going with this story as well I remember when that story happened with the eight Americans and I said if this was eight Jamaicans if these were eight Jamaicans caught in the United States of America with 850,000 US dollars worth of cocaine your eight faces would have been all over US media and you would have been given so much time in US prison they would have thought you committed murder in Jamaica though they were given a fine and they were allowed to fly back to the US nothing on their record as if anything happened so everybody goes back to their normal life after that big record bust today we're talking about this article let's use this for example observer shout out to the observer police playing hot potato with man on a 90 million dollar cocaine rap says champagne oh no no so when peter champagne enters the chat the whole narrative changes in other words he is one of those top attorneys who people who are in desperate situations and have the money to afford his services normally reach out for asap because if he can't get you off he can at least get you so little time that they might as well have gotten you off it's just a good attorney and a saw you go. So Peter Champagne is involved in this. Defense attorney Peter Champagne has accused the police of playing hot potatoes with the health of his client, Robert Chin. Robert Chin is the man who has been charged in connection with the $90 million worth of cocaine seizure at Norman Manley International Airport in Kingston a week ago, Monday. Champagne, the attorney, made the accusation during a bail application for Mr. Chin on Friday at the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court. He said that the 56-year-old Chin suffers from renal failure and needs dialysis treatment every other day. However, while Mr. Chin was taken to get the treatment on Tuesday, he was not taken on Thursday but he needs it every other day so right away peter champagne is establishing that his client is seriously ill and needs a high level of medical attention we're talking about dialysis here the removal of the blood from the body flushing the blood and putting the blood back into the body all right halfway tree police station where he's being kept is saying that it's not our job to do it it's narcotics duty to take him for treatment narcotics 
is saying it's not our responsibility to do it it's halfway tree who's supposed to take him for treatment so this is where he gets the hot potato scenario from they're tossing him around the responsibility around like it's a hot potato one hot potato two i don't want it it's not my responsibility a half a tree supposed to do it i know half a tree is supposed to do it man a them supposed to do it it's narcotic supposed to do it somebody is supposed to do it if he misses today that is it for him the situation is grave i genuinely fear the worst if he remains where he is this seems to be a case of hot potatoes. No one wants to take on all that responsibility. The attorney said, adding that the cost for treatment is 350 US dollars each session. Now remember, he needs this service every other day. So 350 US dollars every other day, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, or Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Do it like that then, right? And that $350 is to be paid by whoever it is that is taking him there. I've also told people this before that Jamaica doesn't have, this is one of the reasons why Jamaica does not give people a life sentence, more people. All these murderers that are caught for murder, and they keep getting 15 years and 20 years and they're only 30 years old and 25 the reason for that they won't give them a true life sentence is because jamaica does not have a hospital system that is set up within the prison system like in the united states of america in the united states of america if you commit a crime you are not going to get out of prison because you are gravely ill you are going to be put in an infirmary inside of a prison so you're going to prison for sure and they have hospital system set up inside of the prison so you will definitely be in prison not Jamaica right and if you think about it if say for instance uh, halfway tree police station decides to take on the responsibility of housing this particular person 350 US dollars every other day these police officers aren't paid properly already the government is supposed to foot that bill 350 us dollars a day y'all know how the exchange rate is in jamaica 100 and something us to, to one american so imagine having to pay 350 every other day according to the prosecution chin taken he was taken for treatment because his family had paid the facility however his attorney said that his wife had the money when she visited him on Thursday and they didn't take him on Thursday. Champagne also said that Chin has a wound with a massive tube that leads to his heart and... All right, so listen, we're selling membership to the channel, okay? Membership to the channel, my friend, is very different from just being a regular subscriber. Membership to the channel means that you have the special privilege of being in the chat room live every morning when we go live Monday to Friday for our morning thoughts show and we talk up the things them. You notice sometimes we have five, six, seven, eight, nine hundred, a thousand people on the live, but only a selected few are in the chat room with their names showing up in green. It's because they have their membership. It's nine dollars and ninety nine cents a month. You can set that and just forget it and let it auto pay every month. See, we're looking to increase the membership to the channel. And I told you at the beginning of the summer that if we had over a thousand members, we would give away one thousand US dollars every month for the rest of the year we didn't get anywhere near that but we're not gonna stop still consider getting your membership for those of you who don't know how to get your membership look next to the subscribe button you will see a button that says join click the join button and then follow the instructions all the way through thanks to the people who have their membership i love and appreciate you to the fullest because that's a different level of support and for those who are about to get their membership i appreciate you greatly thanks in advance get your membership now his neck which requires constant sanitation hmm, or sanitization so this man is gravely ill. I don't. I wonder if, I wonder if he was 
doing this drugs thing to save his life or if he was doing this drugs thing because he's looking at life like this is my you know i'm on the way out anyways i need dialysis every other day think about this i need dialysis every other day and then on top of that i have a large wound according to his attorney he has a large wound and this wound has tubes massive tubes that leads to his heart and his neck which requires constant sanitization i'm on my way out so i might as well do the big lick go out in a blaze of glory if i get away with this cocaine right here i will have made 600 and something thousand us dollars in one go if i get caught they probably won't lock me up because i'm on my way out anyways and even if they lock me up and give me a lot of years i won't survive all that time I need dialysis every other day. The wound, the attorney says, is in a nasty state. Champagne told the judge as he explained that the wound had not been treated properly since Mr. Chin had been arrested. So they arrested him. They're neglecting his health issues, which could cause him to die in custody. That's the bottom line. Champagne also said that Chin is on a strict diet which requires that he avoid salt and sugar or any kind of meat and he had not eaten since thursday the family members were concerned about the fact that he missed dialysis on thursday so i went there just in time to see his wife she came with some fruits she was told quiet bluntly that this is not what is given to prisoners here he said adding that the police eventually allowed her to give him the food after he explained that chin is on a special diet i feel that if it is that he remains in custody he is at great peril in terms of his every day very life in terms of his very life like i said before what the attorney is trying to establish is he will die if he is in custody and those who are holding him in custody do not have the capabilities to make sure that he gets the proper health care he needs now imagine this all this is being thought about for someone who was caught and is responsible for 660,000 US dollars worth of cocaine. That's crazy. Now, the prosecution opposed the bail on the grounds that Chen is considered a flight risk. Your Honor, don't give him any bail because this man surely has the ability to leave. He has travel papers, he has the financial resources, and he has connections. He'll be out of here in no time. We won't see him again. We won't be able to prosecute him. All right. Additionally, the court was told that the Horizon Remand Center in St. Andrew had agreed to take Chin in and ensure that his medical needs are met. But Mr. Champagne rejected that offer, saying, I don't know of any dialysis unit in Horizon. God forbid he goes and the police are not in a position to transport him. It's easy to say, carry him at Horizon. But my friend, the clerk of the court is not in the private practice to know that when you go there at Horizon, the family members have to take at least a week to register and to get their ticket. It takes over an hour to see your client when you go as an attorney. And the registration process is as if you are applying for a passport for the person who are authorized to visit so it's a long lengthy weighty process which again will compromise his health champagne said that the court can impose stringent conditions such as house arrest let my client out judge put him on house arrest the law provides for you to do such thing put him on house arrest that way all these stations and lockups they don't have to worry about him being their responsibility to make sure he does dialysis every other day 
They won't have to worry about cleaning the tubes that are connected to his heart and to the wound. They won't have to worry about him passing away in their custody. Put him on house arrest and have him his travel documents surrendered once his bail is granted. This is a good attorney and this is what he did for his client. Now, in response to that, Parish Judge Maxine Dennis McPherson said, I have to consider whether Mr. Chin will get the care he needs. Mind you, you know, this is a person that just got caught with millions of dollars worth of drugs in Jamaican money, over 600,000 US dollars worth, smuggling cocaine. And this is where we're heading with his case so far, trying to secure bail. The judge said, I have to consider if he'll get the proper care that he needs. I must say that I am disturbed in relation to what I heard happened yesterday. I was told that he had an appointment. That is most unfortunate. It takes a moment for a life to pass. Any one of us could have been in that position and you are all not allowed to seek treatment. I am prepared to grant his bail to Mr. Chin on a humanitarian grounds. <laughs> okay, so if you check that, you see how sensitive the judge is. The judge says it takes a moment for a life to pass. You know, a play with this man's life. Any one of us could have been in that position. Um, Your Honor, not any one of us could have been in that position, honestly. Because it's not any one of us is smuggling 600 and something thousand US dollars worth of cocaine through Jamaica. See, so no, any one of us could not have been in that position, but he is. Now, with that said, she granted him $700,000 bail. Remember, I know this is a man that's 700,000 Jamaican dollars. He just got caught with 600 and something thousand US dollars worth of cocaine. So he was ordered to pay the $700,000 for bail, ordered also that he report to the nearest police station every single day and surrender all his travel documents and they placed a stop order on him meaning if he is seen anywhere trying to travel through any of the ports whether it's by air or by sea they should stop him and not allow him to go through chin was also ordered not to contact any crown witnesses and is now subjected to a nightly curfew as well so basically he's a prisoner in his own ho house then with very little room to move around because one he has to report to the nearest police station every single day and then he has dialysis every other day and then he has no travel documents anymore and then there's a stop order placed on him at all ports right <clears throat> he's to return to court february 10th to allow for the completion of his case file as no statement was on file when the case was mentioned on Friday. No statement was on file when the case was mentioned on Friday. Police have reported that Chin, who is also the brother of the People's National Party Vice President Mikhail Phillips or Michael Phillips, any which way you want to say it, M-I-K-A-E-L spells Mikhail to me, but people are going to say, so for Michael Phillips, we say, okay, he is the brother. What I like how they did, if he had done something courageous and brave and great, say in the United States of America, and he had captured Frontline's news, everybody would have said, yes, man, I'm Michael Phillips, brother that. But because he was caught with this, drugs in this disgraceful situation the media is sure to put out that he is michael phillips half brother <laughs> let's let's not get it twisted he's not my full brother he's my half brother he was attempting to board a flight to the united states of america around 7 a.m in the morning on monday first let's not even go into how they caught him yet we're gonna get this up. let's talk about who he is connected to first so look at who he's connected to this is not no round the corner somebody just trying their foot in politics nobody don't really know you yet 
He is the brother of People's National Party Vice President. All right. So if you think he doesn't have any connections, and if you think the system is not being sympathetic to him because of his connections, then you're blind. Again, I said before, I think it would be a lucrative move to move to Jamaica and start playing in this cocaine trade thing. Because all you have to do is establish some connections, right? And it seems like they're all in it. The funny thing is Jamaican citizens have been saying this for the longest. Politicians are move cocaine and police and are murders. And you know, the all righteous citizens move on go away. You don't know what you're talking about. The police are good people. None of them are involved in such things. Only just trying to make excuses for criminals. Then when you say politicians are moving large amounts of cocaine. But if you not catch a liquor, get a youth with lick a bit of coke, him gone to prison for how many years? Again, the self-righteous Jamaicans will tell you, move on, go ahead. No politician is not selling no cocaine. You guys make this stuff up to make excuses for the liquor corner boy, them and the liquor dirty get a youth them. We're getting involved in these things when the truth of the matter seems to always be exposed with proof. Look how many police officers we've caught so far that are Jamaican police officers disgraced, grabbed up at international airports in the United States of America, transporting large amounts of cocaine into the US, right? Look how many police officers we found to be in breach of what they swore to do, which is to serve and protect when they themselves are carrying out extrajudicial killings for their Don and Badman and Gunman friends and when they themselves are involved in gang activities are actually members of gangs. Hell, they held one the other day trying to sell a whole bunch of high-powered rifles. Hmm. At a time when the law has changed to say if you get caught with one, and it's not registered to you through the FLA you're going to prison for a minimum of 15 years even the Prime Minister got on TV and used my man the slang talk about Radam right okay let's see how they handle that so yes Mr. Chen caught with his large amount of cocaine is getting handled with all the care and respect in the world and make no mistake about it it's because of his political affiliation. Even though his brother has come out to say, I'm, I'm, this, this is not my fight. This, this has nothing to do with me. Matter of fuck, I'm a half brother. This have nothing to do with me. Smart people are going to ask big questions. And the big questions are, well, how long has your brother been doing this? How many other trips did he take that were successful and he was not caught? What are his assets looking like? Do, does his assets fit his job or his career field? Or does he have the big mansions and multiple properties and a yacht out to sea and millions of dollars in the bank, which surely his nine to five or his career field could not have provided all that? Were you not aware that your brother was into something or you thought that the job and career field that he had made that much money to provide the lifestyle he's able to live all this stuff all this stuff goes way deeper but that politician the vice president of the pmp people's national party he's allowed to excuse himself right away nobody is going to probe him to see if maybe he had used his political connections to help his brother to push through his drugs over the years they're surely going to make this look like listen this was a one-time thing and he got caught the one time he did this stupid thing and he deserves leniency so with that and his health failing rapidly the best thing to do is to not give him any jail time hell i don't think he's gonna get any jail time the eight americans did not get any jail time and they had more drugs than he did this is over 90 million dollars worth of drugs you know in jamaican money so this is how they caught him. He was departing Jamaica, heading for a flight to the United States of America at 7 a.m. on a Monday morning when they noticed weird things in a luggage, a suitcase that was assigned to him. Him name did the pani suitcase. 
They search the luggage. You know them haul and pull him at airport. Search the luggage. And when the search was done being conducted, the drugs was found. With an estimated street value of around 600,000 US dollars. Approximately 90,603,000 Jamaican dollars. Police said that he managed to evade them. But he was later arrested about 6.30 p.m. On the same day all right I got so many questions here all right so let's start off with the most obvious question now the police said that he managed to evade them right and then he was later arrested 6 30 p.m. the same day so for the whole day him disappear what happened to the flight he was on a he was heading for a flight you board your flight. You know when you check in for your flight, that's the only way they can get a hold of your luggage. So obviously he checked in, right? They searched at Jamaica and found it in Jamaica before the plane took off. See? How was he able to evade them from the airport and not be found until 6.30 p.m.? You know how? The man turned around and walked right out the airport call his people to come pick him up back at the airport and of course they saw him and nobody said nothing those authorities who searched that luggage they know exactly who he is they know exactly who he's connected to they searched it and they saw him leave and they allowed him to leave and probably even waved to them while he was leaving and said me sooner or later may i go get my, <laughs> may I go get my lawyer real quick and waited outside the airport till his ride came picked him up took him to where he wanted to go usually that's the privilege that's afforded to people like him right turn yourself in when you feel like it and bring a lawyer with you that get a youth not get them the kind of treatment there they you going through the airport a little youth from over spanish town de la vega going to the airport with this much cocaine they are going to ramshackle hall and pull him right there at the airport they won't care if he has dialysis treatment and him they won't care what's failing, how his health is failing. They won't care about any of that. Him going to jail. Pass nothing, go straight to jail. And then fight your way out from there. After is when they would check and say, oh damn, he's probably connected to somebody because an Ophim Coke. And if it's the big man Coke up top, you might see the ghetto youth get let go. Might. Might. But in most cases, ghetto youth end up taking the fall. Mike Graham says that the judge did the right thing. We know that this is a high profile case, but we do not want the man to die for a lack of treatment while he is in custody. So people are sympathetic with him. Chapter one answered uh, Mike Graham and said, the way his lawyer man described the health condition, well, the only thing his client should have in a that grip beside clothes was medications, a Bible, a Sankey, and a bottle of Geritol, not even a message more. Because it sounds like he's gravely ill, right? Guest number three says, people, this person is a suspected narcotics cocaine smuggler and must be severely punished for his offense against Jamaica and its law-abiding citizens if he is found guilty. His medical needs must be attained too. But... He should receive no special privileges due to uptown family political connections and limited privileges shown be given to achieve medical requirements. Chapter 1 says, The police initially compromised the case you know, by allowing the alleged prominent out of the sterile area of the airport in the first place. This case is already starting to look like Bascobel. Four days gone, five more left. Guest three says this alleged smuggler should be should he be very happy that he was not accused of trying to enter Florida with narcotics at the Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport. That would have been a whole different case. He would have been in Broward County Jail until it was time for him to go to trial, which is what I said earlier. And the reason why the U.S. is able to do that 
and not think about oh he has he needs dialysis every other day oh he has a wound that isn't healing we have to let him go because we can't afford to take care of his medical responsibilities the u.s not to worry about that because them have the medical facility right inside of the prison or the jail wherever you're going to be taken to so gravely ill as you might want to be you're going in sundan says so let me get this this man has every health situation possible and is allegedly trafficking cocaine now he is seeking sympathy from the judiciary let him or his family sign documents obligating them and not the jamaican taxpayers to foot his bills i say to the lawyer it is chin who was playing hot potato with his own life can remember his lawyer peter champagne said they're playing hot potato with his client because multiple facilities are refusing the responsibility nope it's not me supposed to do it a half a tree police station supposed to do it nope it's not we as horizon supposed to do it so they're tossing it around because nobody wants to touch it aew says champagne also said that chin was has a wound with a massive tube that leads to his heart and his neck which requires constant sanitization police said that he managed to evade them but was later arrested around 6 30 p.m the same day hmm the wound and massive tube didn't seem to hamper his flight from the police from the airport all right sir chapter one says well when trouble take your picnic boot fit you that means say when a time for you run from police you forget to you have a large wound and tubes that go to heart and all these other things man does think about run al smalling says six hundred thousand us dollars worth of drug bus and special treatment is being sought by his attorney i am torn on whether he should be given special attention on humanitarian grounds or be treated like other people who are charged with a crime no first time dope trafficker is going to attempt that amount of drugs in other words he done this before and God, that's how they do right nobody now jump out upon them first day yes give me 100 million dollar worth of coke let me see if we can go through with it it's a risk for the person who owns the cocaine it's a risk for the person who's carrying it right so you do small amounts first and you figure out a loophole how to go through okay i got through with one key let me get through with five key next and see if it work i got through with five let me get through with seven and nine and ten and twelve fifteen and twenty and over time they increase how much they try to go through with this man was caught with six hundred and sixty thousand or six hundred thousand us dollars worth over 90 million jamaican dollars worth this cannot be his first go which begs back to the question I asked before, how come this man is your half brother now? How close were they? Were you not aware that he was doing this or were you aware and using your own political connections to help your brother to go through all the time and this time him just happened to get catch? I wanna come home says, may I ask you a question respectfully? How many Jamaicans are unable to get renal treatment are on a long waiting list before you answer to be fair i should inform you that i am a relative who is on a long waiting list in other words you have jamaicans normal jamaicans here suffering from diabetes need dialysis to save their lives and they're on a long waiting list medical treatment renal failure and they're on a long waiting list for a transplant they're on a long waiting list for proper care some of them can't even afford it but here is a man who just got caught smuggling a large amount of cocaine and this is at the forefront but of course i think his family can afford it randy says are the police playing hot potato with this man's health or is he playing hot potato with his own health so let me get this right he's accused of having six hundred thousand us dollars worth of cocaine but he can't pay 350 dollars a day for his own health care and the answer to that is 
Yes, he can. And they never disputed that. Peter Champagny said, as a matter of fact, that when he showed up at the station where he was being held on the day he was supposed to go, which is a Thursday, appointment was set up. The police did not make sure that he got to his appointment. His wife was there and she was there with the money. So, yes, he can afford it. They just need to establish that don't lock him up because there are too many red tapes and loopholes. If they lock him up, although his family can afford it, he's not going to be able to get the help that he needs. Therefore, he might die in custody. That's the gist of this whole story. Last comment. What the police should have done from the get-go was to allow the prominent passenger and his precious cargo to board the flight and then not notify them counterparts in the U.S. to bow low. Bow low means be on the lookout for. Was be too hasty and a sight nay learn to make honey. <laughs> in other words, what they should have done, like the person said, was leave it. Make him go on. Make the U.S. catch him. Just give them a heads up. Hey, there's a passenger coming your way. His name is Chin. He's blah, blah, blah. And we suspect that he has a large amount of cocaine on him. It's in a red briefcase, suitcase, blah, blah, blah. Give them the ups and then left him and make him go. Because surely, had he been caught in the U.S., he would have been in confinement and he would have been given all the medical necessities needed to keep his health stable. See? But what I want you to do for me at the end of this video is leave in the comment section. Do you think that the prominent politician who he is connected to actually knows that his brother was into things and might have even been benefiting from his brother being into this type of business over the years? Do you think that he might have even helped his brother along the way, given his political connections, to ease some drugs through Jamaica time and time again? And now that his brother is caught, he swiftly distanced himself from him, saying, that's my half-brother, and I don't really know them like that. Um, him into what he's into, that is not me. And that's a cop-out. Do you think police should investigate more of his family members to include his prominent political brother, national, people's national party, vice president, Michael Phillips? Do you think, do you think that this same treatment would have been given to a like a regular Jamaican citizen? We don't even have to say ghetto youth. To a like a regular Jamaican citizen. Or is this another clear case of there are two laws in the country of jamaica one for the rich and prominent who are or those who are connected to them and one for regular jamaican citizens talk up let's have this discussion in the comment section what exactly do you think should be done with this man at this point let me end this video by telling you what is going to happen he's not going to do any prison time in jamaica you heard me He's not going to do any prison time in Jamaica. And I know this because the eight Jamaicans that are the eight Americans that got caught off the cruise ship with more drugs than this man had did not do any time. And that was only two months ago. So my prediction is he will not do any time in prison in Jamaica. And he will probably be hit with a fine, which he is able to pay. Once that fine is paid, he will go about his normal life. What says you? I'll catch you all in the comment section. Have a wonderful day. And please remember, Medea, after my eye surgery, I'm healing up. But when we go live again, it's going to be an affair. All right? So get your um, memberships because without your memberships, I don't want nobody telling me in 2023. So Flo, me can't get into the chat room and I have so much to say. Get your membership. Set your membership on what I'm calling it now, where you automatic payment and then forget about it. It's $9.99 a month. All right. I'll see you then. I'm out. Peace.